Good morning everybody, it's Jason here and this is my Digging Frantic project. It's Thursday the 16th of April and I didn't manage to post the video from yesterday so it's you've just probably watched it if you're watching this little bit. Um, I've been doing a bit of garden this morning, we were up quite early this morning, Kirsty was up at 5 to try and get some water because we've been having trouble getting water so you have to get up and use it when you can so she did the washing really early. I've been up since about 7, 7.30, it's about 10.30 now. So let me just show you what I've been up to. So I've done a little bit of weeding in the main grow zone. You can't really see that. It was just a little bit of grass coming through because obviously this whole area was grassed up until fairly recently. And then I've finished digging over this area. So I've increased the size of it. This is going to be our pumpkin and squash, maybe melons as well patch. So this is the little extra bit that I did the other day. You see, I also yesterday finished off the putting the netting up. It's obviously only attached at one side or, or, or well, three edge, three sides. There's, there's one side that's not attached. Um, I think I might put a pillar, an extra post, sorry, in there. I might move this one over there that's just freestanding now and I might move it to the other side over there so I can run a string across and just help support that. But it's actually fairly, fairly robust and it's it stayed up, it's been fairly windy the last 24 hours or so. We had a little bit of rain last night as well. So anyway, I finished digging this area and I put some compost on it. I had some sargassum that I collected before the lockdown went into place a couple of weeks ago. And I've just dressed the top of it with that and then dug it in. Quick look at some of the seedlings in the garage, the beetroots. Some of them are actually getting a little bit stronger. I'm fairly hopeful about these ones now. They're starting to get their secondary leaves, you can see that. Unfortunately, however, we've been having increasing trouble with insects. And I don't know if you can see on, on there, but some of those beetroots have had their leaves noshed by something or other overnight. Similarly, one of my peppers has had all its leaves eaten overnight. Not quite sure what that is. There were a couple of insects on which I squished this morning. That one's had a little bit noshed as well. Hopefully that doesn't get too bad. And also this morning, some of the passion fruit seeds that I planted on the 6th of April have started to come through. So it hasn't taken too long for those to come through. These were just I harvested from a passion fruit. So instead of eating it, I sacrificed the seeds and I thought I'd plant some and just see whether they would grow. We've obviously got our passion fruit um, vine in the grow zone already. These are the seedlings, nothing much happening with those. Potatoes are continuing to grow really well. The purple one's still growing like triffids. Even the orange ones are starting to come through really well now. And I've taken slips off all these, except for this one in the corner. But that one, as you saw the other day, is starting to sprout. And these are the slips that have just been in water, which I'm trying to root. So I'm just going to pot some of these on now. So these really long ones, you can see this one here, has got a slightly different shaped leaf. It's like a heart or a spade shaped leaf. Um, these ones are sort of spiky shaped leaves, like a maple leaf or something like that. These are the purple ones, and then these are the orange ones, these heart-shaped leaves. So I'm going to pot some of those on now. I'm just going to show you the roots, how they've grown just in water. So here the seedlings are that are rooted, or the slips, the sweet potatoes. So there are 10 that have got really significant root systems already, which I'm going to plant out into pots, and then in a week or so I'll probably put them in the garden. So they're doing pretty well. There's actually one still in there. This is one of the orange ones. You see the shape of the leaves which isn't really got anything so I'm just going to leave that in water some more and then I'm going to twist some more slips off these ones put them in water and then just keep the whole process going so if I've got 10 there potted three that'll be 13 after today potted and another half dozen or more going so I'll probably have 20 or so so far as I said you know from one potato you can get sort of 20 to 50 slips I just don't know how long it's going to keep going the potato isn't particularly shrinking so I guess when they start to grow, they photosynthesize and they're producing most of their own food, so they aren't taking too much out of the, the tuber itself. So it's a pretty impressive situation. I think I've probably got enough, but I might keep doing it and then just give them away to people. So if you want any potato slips, let me know. Here the slips are potted into drink cups, because that's really all I've got left. And I've twisted the other slips off there, of those potatoes, and I've put them in the water at the back. So I've got nine potted and seven more in the water and still a load more growing here. So it's been very, very successful as this entire enterprise. So it looks like we're going to have plenty of sweet potatoes at some point in the future.
I've also decided today to pot on these pumpkin seedlings. These ones were planted directly in these disposable pots. You're not really supposed to take them out of here once they're in there because the roots, I don't know if you can see on this one, I've already taken two out, but the roots start to grow through the material. And the idea is that you plant these directly in the ground. However, I planted two pumpkin seeds in each because I wasn't really sure how many were going to come through. And they all came through, or most of them came through. So I want to split them. I don't want to just waste them. Action! So what I'm going to do oh. now is I'm going to pot to show you how I pot one of these on. So I don't know if I'm doing it right. I'm just making it up as I go along. Um, I, th I think I'm getting better at it as I do it more. But uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that know a lot better than me. So these, I potted all these ones. I've already done these, but Kirsty had the great idea to video this one. So essentially there are two in this pot and they're starting to, the, 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 the roots are starting to come out. So I want to pot them on so they don't get too entwined Show together. So, well, you can't really see it. They're, they're really, I've, I've, put, oh, okay. I've already poked oh, okay. it through. So what I do is I take my knife and I put it down the side, poke it down the side and to sort of separate the roots gently away from the side of the pot and then I push it up with my thumb from underneath, it's quite a big hole in it then I turn it upside down and gradually tease it out these roots here are all stuck to this pot you're not really supposed to do this like I said before with these pots these pots are supposed to be buried but because I planted two seeds and I didn't want to waste them so then what I'm doing is I'm gradually, very very gently just, just teasing it apart in the middle somewhere. You can hear the roots snapping and <laughs> it's kind of very traumatic. See there, there, they're all coming apart. I'm just sort of teasing it gently, trying to disturb the root ball as little as possible. So then I've got half of the plant there and then I put a little bit of stuff back in there. Stuff, that's the official term, is it? That's the official term, <laughs> that's the black stuff. And then I put a bit in there just to sort of space it and then I pop that in just like that and then this soil that, I've, that I'm putting in is already pre-wetted I don't know whether this is the right thing to do but this is what I've been doing so I pre-wet the soil I basically put it in this bowl and I mix it with water so I, because it's very dry and if you don't do that then you have to really I guess soak it from the bottom up and I, since I don't really have a, a large container for doing that and I just do it this way so that's all in there now, it's fairly firmly potted down, and then I'll water it in. So that, well, that's already wet, that soil, but I'll put some more soil in in a second. Sorry, I'll put some more water in in a second. So do this one as well. Pop all the roots in, very gently just put it in, and then shove some more down the side. Shove being another technical gardening term. I know all the terms, I know all the, all the technical terms, I'm already technical <laughs> You're person. You're a horticulturalist now, aren't you? Oh, is that what I am? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Well, something, I think I'm sure that's what there somebody There you go, says. so that one looks pretty good. So you can see these leaves, are, these leaves here, these are the cotyledonous leaves, these, these ones, and then these properly pumpkin-shaped leaves are uh, the regular leaves. See, these are all going yellow and they're starting to die, and then eventually it will just be these, these type of leaves. So they're looking pretty sad at the moment because they've got all these yellow cotyledons on them, but... Uh, Hopefully they'll have some nice leaves soon. So that's it.